So in the meantime, what was it uh, you were up to today, Laura? There was a conference you were doing? Oh, yeah, it was just an online conference. We did a panel. Mm -hmm. And it actually went really well. Uh, I, I crammed a lot into a short amount of time and really laid out the Astro stuff and uh, the weaponized version of how the cabal or deep state work with that and what is available to us that we can work with in order to move forward in a positive way. So it went well. And uh, a bunch of other people, Charnel and Neil and Brad Olson and some others. Brad. <clears throat> so we're just for Elena, right? Oh. Well, I think uh, Elena has decided not to come back on. Mercury just went into retrograde, so it, we, we're getting a nice uh, blast of weird Mercury energy. I'm sure she'll be back on. And are we starting fresh from the beginning? or? Uh, no, we'll, we'll kind of pick up until... Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Thanks for uh, sticking around, Elena. This is unprecedented for me. I've had to mess uh, other people... Uh, stop me like earlier from even getting in, but it's so hard for me to focus on things. I need to be able to see everybody clearly. And uh, I know the people that are going to be watching the video later on for this are going to appreciate it much better um, seeing everybody. So uh, I would like to get into a question that I had and I made sure to write it down because I'm very blonde and I tend to forget a lot. Uh, that's right. Okay, now a friend of mine, Mr. Rowe, had um, brought up the other. I haven't heard this from anyone else, but it's something that's kind of freaking me out. So that's why I'm, I'm bringing it up. Have you heard anything about the asteroid that's supposed to be coming on the 18th of January, just in a couple days? No, because when I was looking it up, uh, Mr. Rowe had put this thing about asteroids that are, are coming in January and the first one, they say the, how many kilometers away from the earth it's going to be. The second one, they, they say how many miles away from the earth it's going to be. And then from uh, the third one, they, they put it down to astronomical units. It was a very small unit and it definitely had the hair on the back of my neck stand up, especially after the release of don't look up. So you have heard nothing that a rock is going to smash into us? Because I've been trying to will it into my forehead if it's coming. Oh I'm just goodness. asking you, so you haven't heard anything from your contacts about an asteroid coming to kill us? Okay, there's both relief and regret there. Okay, anyways, now, Michael, what were you going to ask her? <laughs> oh, I was uh, going to say that, uh, you know, this has been something the cabal has been trying to pull off for some time uh, an asteroid attack and it seems that the Earth Alliance and the Galactic Federation or the positive ETs have thwarted that you know whenever they've whenever they've lined up an asteroid to do to do its dirty work uh, that's been nudged aside or stopped or somehow uh, redirected so yeah it doesn't look like that kind of false flag attack is going to happen at all, even though they've been trying to bring it about and trying to frighten people and create the kind of narrative for that energy to to bring uh, to come about. But I don't see it happening. That's fantastic to hear because uh, I don't think anybody else has been stressing about it, but I know I have. So thank you for that. Um, whose turn is it next? Dan, is there something you'd like to bring up next? Oh, uh, I would like to, you know, I, I, you're just looking at everything that's going on. You're just wondering if it's, if every, since they have all the evidence on all the cabal and everything, and it seems as though we're waiting for a certain degree of, uh, of the populace to become awake and aware of what's been going on that uh, things aren't going to shift. Um, and, uh, and you know, like Elena says, you know, they're, they're pulling out all stops in a way, you know, as they're being taken off this planet. They're, uh, it seems as though they're being extra nasty, but uh, everybody's wondering uh, what, uh, what's going to happen. 
You know, it, 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 you look at the if you uh, look at the mainstream media news, you know, which, uh, you know, being an ex ABC newsman, that's my one of my main focuses, how it's been uh, infiltrated and hijacked and manipulating the perceptions and being used against us in so many different ways. Um, you know, everybody's just probably sitting on the edge of their seat uh, wondering uh, what's going to transpire next. That is literally where I'm sitting right now. Sorry, I was missing the mute <laughs> for some reason. There's three of them, and I've not been drinking. Um, <laughs> Laura, uh, do do you have anything you want to bring up? Because I, after after you say something, I would like to find out because like I don't know a lot about Elena, and a lot of people don't that uh, are asking me even right now. I'm getting messages on my phone and stuff. To, to for her to tell us uh, a little bit about herself. So, uh, Laura, do you have something uh, to ask Elena? Yes. Um. Yeah. Well, Elena, tell us about yourself. It seems like uh, there you go. Thank you. People want a little bit more of a background. Um. I. I. I you have three books, right? I forwarded uh, the third one, which was about Val Thor, which is really cool, and I love how we came together. But yeah, just maybe a brief sort of synopsis of, um, just your how you got your start. Or, how, yeah, and how it evolved into this contact you have with Thorhan. Thank you, Laura. Well, um, I am archaeologist of my profession and uh, also artist, but archaeology is my, uh, my profession. I was uh, abducted when I was a child at the age of nine and rescued by people from the Galactic Federation. They saved me, they took me on board their ship, they took care of me and they brought me back, but they decided to keep contact with me. And to this day, I am in contact with them, but it's not only contact, I, I mean, I have te frequent um, telepathic contact with them, some of them. And it's, it's also about physical exchange visits, invitations. I am invited a lot. I've been invited on their ship many times regularly, you know, I in regular intervals in my life, my life. And um, well, in, uh, in 2018, they came back after a short absence and they said that things are were, were about to change on Earth. And they were right. They reactivated my memory from a, my, the night of my abduction when I was traumatically abducted by small greys and rescued. And when I got these memories back, because I was ready, they said, things changed for me. Uh, I decided to tell my story. So I wrote my first book, A Gift from the Stars. That's how it started. But in the process of writing it, they decided upstairs to start giving me information. And, you know, the game changed because I became their, how to say, mystery. And I passed on data, messages. I did a whole repertoire of alien races who are visiting our planet. You know when before you incarnate on this planet, you just pick tools that are going to help you in your mission. And one of the tools I m may have picked was good in drawing. <laughs> so I could draw all the races I've been shown and I can draw all the, the places where I'm going in this star system because you can't take photos, you know, because people like me, contactees, people like me, like Alex Collier, for instance, we are gladly <laughs> um, utilized as soft disclosure, you know, because we are not officials, because we are not politicians, because we are not um, mainstream, you know, um, how to say people. People doubt, there's always a doubt, are we genuine, you know, and that is what is the soft disclosure that you bring up information, but not in an official way, that people choose to believe it or not. That's mm -hmm. why what the contactees like me and like Alex Collier are chosen for. And um, that's, that's why I am. <laughs> now, those who would ask, uh, for, those, for those that would ask, why is it we can't, I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but why is it we can't take their picture? Because it won't be soft disclosure anymore. It would be official disclosure because a, a photograph is a proof regarding to the modern standards. And uh, this 
goes into another level. It hits the prime directive. And any decision of disclosing anything must be voted, you know, by the High Council upstairs, and it re must really follow a plan. So you can't randomly take photos and show them. It would mess up everything, all their plans of soft disclosure. You know, everything is done very um, like a clock, you know. It, it's very precise, so that's why you, we can't take photos. It would mess up and create chaos. as above, so below. There's uh, that they, they've got. It's, <clears throat> I, I believe it was Michael I was talking about it with before, and probably Dan. There was that movie. Is it Jupiter Rising? You just know that movie I'm talking about. That, that Michael's getting so. I believe it's quite possible there's something like that out there. This planet is actually somebody's birthright <laughs> that doesn't necessarily live here at the moment and uh we all think it's ours but they think it's theirs. so yeah that that's I, I told people they wanted to know what to expect tonight and i told them to get ready for trippy conversations because i i like covering all of it i'm i used to be a flat out skeptic i like to be the devil's advocate but it, you do it in a way that because I, look i can't prove any of you were wrong, just as like as much as I'd love to prove you're right. I've had my own experiences that that can make make me relate to you a lot more. But to the public, I can't, you know, just like you guys can't. We have to you have to feel what's right for yourself. And uh, I think that's what a lot of us are starting to do now with the major awakening going on. And actually, um, a sidestep from that, uh, I wanted to bring up that on the 22nd of January, they're planning a worldwide march, uh, especially in Quebec here. I know they're doing it there for sure, but they're trying to make it worldwide. And I would suggest that if you can't get to a big city, that's fine. Um, me and my buddy Mike are taking a few signs and just going up the road to uh, City Hall. And you can th do the same thing in your town because we need to get it to a point where everybody is not complying at the same time in order to get these um, elitist pricks, sorry, but elitist pricks out of office. Um, I'm going to let somebody, I'm going to start ranting now. So I'm going to let somebody else, Michael, uh, is there something else you'd like to get into? Uh, either that you've been working on that you'd like to uh, share with us or that you'd like to ask of Elena. Yeah, well, I, I remember one of the things that, and this is uh, something that Elena mentioned, in uh, one of the communications she had with uh, Una from the Intergalactic Confederation, um, Una made the comment that uh, by 2023, all of this will be a memory, that we would by then uh, be in this completely new situation uh, where a lot of the, the, the harsh policy people are experiencing, the secrecy, the control of the dark fleet, that that's just a, a, a memory. And I see that happening, that uh, we seem to be on a schedule. And, you know, I mean, that was something Elena said, 2023. Others have talked about 2024, 2023 being a global revolution. Cliff High, John Peterson from the Arlington Institute, they've been talking about that. Uh, you know, the, the web bots that Cliff High monitors is, is pointing to a... a a global revolution by 2024. But I think that what we're witnessing now is, is probably you know, everything is being accelerated because, you know, these policies that are being implemented worldwide, you know, the French parliament just issued legislation today, you know, banning people who have not received the, uh, you know, that thing in the arm banning them from restaurants, theatres and so forth. And, you know, I mean, France is a country of revolution. And so, you know, to me, I look at that and I say, well, you yeah, know, this is just getting the French into another revolution. So the, the deep state, have no, <laughs> they have no way of holding all this back. And I think this is what we're seeing now, that, uh, you know, we are going to witness a global revolution and, and a big part of that is going to be uh, disclosing the truth about uh, the different ET races out there that are visiting us. We we don't hear you, Stephen, but... 
Okay, that makes perfect sense because I'm I'm blonde, I'm stoned, and I was muted. And it's to cover up things. And what could they be covering up? Antarctica. Uh, Elena, any updates on that situation? Well, I haven't been told recently updates on Antarctica because things are in the hands now of the elites. What happened in Antarctica recently? There was a meeting that had been planned in July 2021 when the Jupiter Agreement occurred that five months later, the certain elites in charge of the financial system would meet in Antarctica with extraterrestrials. The, this meeting was about the um, transition between the ancient monetary system and the new that the Earth Alliance has. In, they have the keys. The, the extraterrestrials do not want an economical collapse on Earth. They hope this will not happen because there has been enough chaos and suffering and this it would really destroy the last hopes it would so many people would suffer and they don't want that that's not in in the plan that you know empowering humanity and you know Absolutely. all these things so they are they have worked very hard to get the elites to the elites who have the keys of the actual uh, old monetary system financial system to give the keys you know to the earth alliance but that it's not about giving uh, the keys like how it works here is, you know, it, there is a deeper dimension to it, which is dark magic. The monetary, the financial system that is in you, that has been in use until now, is based on also dark magic. Dark magic is an element in the cement of it. And it, it, it goes very deep and very far. It's like a spider, you know, it does many legs to it. But there are certain people in the elites. And Una, this lady from the Intergalactic Confederation, I remember she mentioned those of the name 33. And Michael just clicked. He said, oh, that's the Freemasons. You know, you remember my... And anyway, these people, not only these ones, but some of them, and anyway, they they have the keys of these rituals. What are the keys of these rituals? It's the way it has been done in order to be undone. The thing is, they need to do it themselves. So there are two, two elements. They gave to these, these goodities and the Earth Alliance the keys of these rituals and of all the monetary system, but they need, well, in case of if they don't do it themselves, the Earth Alliance will do it, but the Earth Alliance and the goodities, they, don't really want to do it themselves because it's about dark magic and nobody wants to compromise themselves in mm -hmm. okay. doing this, you know, so they want yeah. them to do it. I gotcha. That's it. That does make sense too. So to debunkers, stick that in your pipe. Okay. Uh, and a shout out to Talk Stream Live. We've got a great crowd. Studio A's got a great crowd. We got the Watchmen on studio a as well and uh wanted to quickly say that if you're listening on any of the formats out there come on down to revolution.radio and uh you can go to the chat room in chatsy or you can just go to the nav bar you can buy merchandise uh we've got some very cool we've even got crocs now people i mean who doesn't love crocs right so uh you can donate we need some donations as well and uh we get about 13 minutes, I think, or yeah, around there uh, before the next break. So, Dan, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. You know, I was just thinking, you know, the listeners, everybody's at different levels of research, you know, and everybody's had the time to be able to do the scholarly research that Dr. Right. Michael Sal has been doing over the decades. And I am so grateful to Elena for bringing in a new perspective. You know, I'm an old 20th century witness. And then they came up with the secret space program, the 20 and back program. Now we're having people have contact directly with the Galactic Federation of Worlds. I found it quite remarkable that Michael Sala found uh, this book called The Federation that matched almost exactly word for word what the prime directive was that uh, Thorhan gave Elena. Now that all that clicked it over for me, 
You know, uh, I know that uh, <laughs> Elena is not making any of, of this up. It is. Uh, it There's is more than enough a, evidence out there in the sky that that we've been seeing it on TV now, and they're show, even in TikTok videos cropping up, showing large ships, pyramid-shaped yeah. ships, things that we hadn't seen until this point. We've seen the triangles. We had not seen pyramids really until recently. Yeah. So go ahead, Dan. What, well, what's given me great hope is that there is a moral code in the galaxy. There is a prime directive where they seek balance and, and peace throughout the galaxy. And the fact that these higher density or higher frequency, whatever term you want to use, higher evolved races have consciousness and technology is, is reflected. Whatever the level of consciousness that a race is, their technology reflects that. Therefore, their weaponry <laughs> is highly evolved. So if you have a, a, a more uh, you know, nefarious group of extraterrestrials, you have a group that has a higher moral code that can, uh, that can alleviate that threat. And so that, to me, is very, very hopeful that there is such a moral code throughout the galaxy. To me, that that was, you know, when you study all this stuff for many years, going going way back and looking at all the witness testimonies and all the documents, and you and you look at some of the nefarious things that have been done, uh, you can lose a lot of hope. But the fact that there is a moral code that gave me great hope. I just wanted to share that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Michael, you were going to only be sticking around for the first hour? Yes? Okay, so well then let's get back to you, sir. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell us that you've got coming up in the pipes or anything you'd like to ask uh, Elena? Uh, yeah, well, uh, this is one of the things that uh, Elena said <clears throat> uh, in a communication from Thorhand concerning the uh, discovery of these... Um, uh, extraterrestrial arcs that belong to the interplanetary, um, the, sorry, to the intergalactic confederation that they're being found all over the solar system, including the Earth, and, and mentioned several parts of the Earth as well. So I'm actually working, uh, and the article will be out tomorrow morning. Uh, my source, my army source, JP, w was taken on a mission to one of these in the Atlantic just off the coast of Florida, and he said it's huge. It's bigger than the bigger than the one on the moon, uh, and and that was very interesting because Thorhan told Elena that there's they're they're all over the earth. There's a number of them all over the earth, but the biggest one is under the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, and so 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 wow. this is something that JP's just went to. He did a mission. It was a joint mission uh, involving uh, the Americans, uh, the American space program, the Chinese, and there were these Aztec Indians who understood the writings <laughs> of, of nice. the, the hieroglyphs that were part of the mission mm. as well. So, th so that'll be coming out tomorrow. But um, I, I don't think this is something that's going to kind of be able to be contained for that long. Because, you know, we're not talking about a trip to Ganymede or a trip to the far side of the moon where they're uncovering all this stuff. We're talking about the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. and that there's a huge kind of a Navy structure, a circular ring type structure suspended directly over this huge arc buried underground several miles deep. And, and they're doing joint missions into that. So, uh, so JP's kind of blown the whistle on that. I've put it out. It, it, you know, Thorhan has confirmed that, yes, there's an arc under the Atlantic. It's the biggest one here on the Earth. And, yeah, so I think that was an amazing synchronicity there. Wow, Michael, I, I'm just learning about GP's mission now. So that's quite uh, fantastic that, you know, when things are matching, information is matching, it's, it's always fantastic for the, the public. public. To, to really realize that this is happening. Mm -hmm. Thorman said as well that there would be two major archaeological finds or discovery this year in 2022. So maybe this is one of them. I don't know. We will see. It's a surprise. I'm thinking uh, I've been 
have I had a strange dream, and like I've said before, I don't remember them often. But uh, it had something to do with giants. That much I do remember. So I think something may, may end up coming out about this Tartaria that I've been hearing so much about. If you can, uh, when next time you're in contact, ask your friends if there's anything to that, because I'd love to know. Okay. Uh, we've got about six minutes. Uh, Michael, anything else you'd like to get into since you're, you're on your way out soon? Uh, that, that I think that there's a lot of um, officials that want this information to get to get out. Um, you know, the, the Earth Alliance really is encouraging uh, people to kind of like share the information to, uh, and certainly with my insider, this uh, army uh, whistleblower, I mean, he's being encouraged to come out and talk about this so that there are people inside the military that are kind of like saying, no, don't don't talk. This is uh, classified information and, and you, you're not authorised to disclose this. But yet he's being told by his covert operatives to, that he needs to talk about it. He needs to go out. And I, I think you know, what I found really interesting about this ship in the Atlantic is that uh, JP was taken there in 2014 for the first time. He was taken there on one of these anti-gravity craft, he he went to this, you know, to this Navy structure on, on floating over this extraterrestrial arc. In 2014, he went there and he said that uh, he got off that craft, that small craft, and, that, and he was heading towards some kind of elevator that would take you down into the ship, into the structure that was down below the ocean. But a general stopped him and said, no, you're, you shouldn't be here go away and so he was sent back and that that told me that 2014 that that was the time was not yet right for all this stuff to come out mm -hmm. but now he's being, being given access and i think this is what we're seeing that the that the the people that control the secrets are allowing this information to come out so i think it's going to be really incredible over the next uh few years as all this stuff comes out really really quickly you know we've got the James Webb Telescope, the Space Telescope that's out there now, you know, they're, they're getting ready uh, for announcing extraterrestrial life. I mean, NASA's uh, consulting 24 theologians uh, about how the disclosure of extraterrestrial life is going to impact world religion. So, yeah, they're getting ready, and, and we need to do the same as well. Absolutely. Um, Elena, is there anything you wanted to add to that, to what uh, Michael was just saying? Well, that these arcs are spread throughout the star system. There are many more. And these are from ancient colonies of the Intergalactic Confederation okay. that, was, that were in our star system very long time ago. You know, they are called the founders or the seeders. They are a compound of different races who have mixed their DNA with, with humans on Earth. And they left time capsules behind. And we these time do. capsules, yes, yeah. these time makes capsules sense to me. kept a Lord knowledge <laughs> that is, that's been kept all this time until the moment humanity is going to be ready. So this, this knowledge is suddenly made available. It's going to be slowly made available because these arcs are activated by the return of the people who have the same technology. They are like alive, you know, they are like living ships it's bio ships essentially yes particular yeah. yes it, it makes Awaken. sense to me yeah absolutely uh laura is there something you quickly like to add before we go to break <clears throat> oh not really just the uh term arc i remember when i was dealing with the mars recruitment that's what they named the vehicles well the the craft that we would be going in um arc and uh, that that thought uh, kind of came up, um, and I'm just you know listening, and I'm fascinated. Uh, I'm just wondering um, about the dark technologies that the reptilians use that can cloak them and create holographic appearances of being benevolent, and where that might be 
a last ditch effort to confuse people as far as when benevolent galactic beings might be showing up or what your thoughts are on that? Or, or have you heard about that? Just where um, a reptilian being can appear to be, uh, may, may, maybe it's because there's a clone or some sort of DNA uh, material they have to make them not reptilian. I know they do it on a human level already, but yeah. Well, the reptilians that were on Earth have been expelled, so there's not any more any physical danger with, with them. But what still remain is, you know, all the artificial intelligence that is still storing what remains of the black goo. All these 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 entities, some are reptilian entities with with no bod no no bodies. And they can interact with uh, confusing people. I don't think we will see more of um, physical reptilians shape shifting because yes, the reptilians have the ability of shape shift. They can do it two ways. They can do it by modifying their molecular structure to physically change, or they can create an illusion, a holographic illusion. And you you will see a very attractive person, very charismatic, and it will be a reptilian. They used to do that. They know how to do that. Uh, Absolutely. I, I got to yeah. stop you right there. Remember what you're saying? We're talking about the reptilians because uh, we may not hear it, but the music is probably playing right now or it will be in 10 seconds. So thank you, Michael, for, for being here. Michael's going to be taking off and I'll be back with Dan, Laura and Elena after the break uh you guys all got about five minutes okay Great bye everyone aloha hey aloha michael thanks michael aloha. all right welcome back to the red pill i am steve crawford we got off to a rocky start at first the studio wouldn't accept my call i've had flashbacks of my childhood calling my parents to come and get me from jail it was nuts and, and then michael accidentally pushed a button, which should have logically just changed the way he saw us, but it changed the way we all saw each other. And my little rabbit brain just couldn't <laughs> fathom what was going on picture wise, but we got it all back together. We got everybody back on the call. Michael had to take off. Um, not going to say where he is. He's uh, being protected. We've got to protect our landmarks and Michael's a landmark. Damn it. Uh, we are back with Laura Eisenhower, Dan Willis, and Elena Danan. Elena, um, this I I don't I don't know what how how to start. with saying I've had incidents in my life. Dan knows about them. Laura knows about them. Everybody who's listened to my show knows about them. There is one time um, that I can remember for a fact. I was 16 years old hitchhiking from St. Catharines, where I live, which is near Niagara Falls, Canada. And uh, so we're, we're kind of at, uh, I'm at Lake Ontario. And I was hitchhiking to Lake Erie. <laughs> and I, I actually was walking because nobody was picking me up. But I, I was walking, I looked to the left, it was nighttime, there was this, what I thought was a bright star. That's how everybody's story started, right? I, it looked like a bright star over Niagara Falls. And um, then I know I'm, I was thinking about some nonsense in my head, and but I, I remember stopping, thinking, "Is that thing getting closer?" Then the next thing I know, I finished that thought. I turned forward, and I'm in Port Colborne on Lake Erie, uh, with with like uh, it had to have been about it would have took me about an hour and a half to two hours, bare minimum, to walk the journey. I was only 30 minutes into it and I was I had arrived at where I was going. That's why I have I don't tell a lot of people because all of the experiences I've heard about for the, the most part you you get your like your Whitley Strieber with the probes and such, you know. And to me it wasn't and they they were terrified and I don't want to belittle their experiences because it it was so unterrifying that they gave me a ride where I was going, <laughs> you know, have, has anything like that happened to you before they gave you back your memory? Did you have inklings 
that something was going on. Well, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Well, yes. Um, I I had this memory of my abduction this night blanked temporarily because it was too traumatic, and I really thank them that I never remember this in my life until recently. But I had flashes of what had happened, that something had happened. Okay, I saw this big UFO. We were different people seeing it, this big UFO, this big, big flying saucer above the roofs. It was in the south of France at the time. It was small. Um, and I have this vivid memory of this UFO coming above the house. And my grandmother knew about it because she had been an abductee. She was an abductee as well. And she knew that it was going to change color, and and she she knew everything. She knew it was people from outer space, and this I remember well. And of course, waking up the following morning, bleeding and having markings on my body, and you know. So yes, I knew something happened, and I needed to get this missing time back. So it's probably like you. They picked you up and they you had missing time I suppose because I don't I don't know if you you didn't say you remembered what happened in the ship yeah it was I I was looking at this thing and thinking is it coming closer and then when I and I was in St. Catherine still and then when I turned my head forward from that thought to me there was no time missing until I realized what time it was and then I'm like, wait, wait a minute. How did I completely phase out an hour and a half of my walk from St. Catharines to the mouth of Port Coburn? I, you know, I was I was 16. I was not heavily into drugs. I was not drinking. I smoked occasional joints and I was not stoned that day. So, <laughs> you know, you scratch your head. But at, I, at that point, I didn't remember. I just knew that. I couldn't account for some time that was missing. So to me, it didn't seem traumatic or scary at all. And often before I moved where I am now, I would go outside uh, to, just to have a cigarette, a, a filthy habit. Yes, I've got to quit, but I would go outside. To ha but when I was doing this was when I'm seeing them all. It would seem like they would fly directly over my house. There was there was one I still I, I wish I had a better camera at the time I tried to film it and it just it was too faint to light but it was appearing and disappearing so quickly it was just one ship but it was doing it so quickly while I was thinking do something it, it clicked in and it's pop, 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 and I'm giggling and crying like a little girl and I'm looking for my neighbors or somebody who passing by to go look tell me i'm not crazy please did you feel like that in the beginning um no i felt hypnotized mesmerized by this you story. had family right that you said that that kind of knew too so yeah that's just yeah, wild to me sorry i've been dominating it um laura is there something you'd like to add oh you were saying something about family yeah, you know, didn't you say, yeah, grandmother or something, didn't you say? Or your mother was a victim as well, Elena? My grandmother. That's my grandmother okay. was, yes, regularly abducted as well. And how was just communicating with your family in general? How did that go yeah. when you really felt well, like you needed? <laughs> badly, because my gran with my granny, we managed to talk about it, but it was very sensitive so topic for her. She would be very mute about it. I understand, you know, my grandmother, it was another time, you know, other mentalities and you don't speak about these things which are very disturbing. Now we are more open minded to, 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 to talk about it. Look at us, you know, <laughs> imagine like 100 years ago, you know, kind of um, nearly. The rest of my family, when I tried to talk, they wouldn't uh, believe me and they would say it's my imagination. So I, so I shut it up. Dan, you got something you want to, a question you want to get in there? I'm, I'm just still, my mind's a little bent about what I'm hearing. Yeah. So I need you guys <laughs> to cover me for me for a minute. Yeah. I, 
I'm fascinated. The last uh, week or so, I've been reading uh, Elena's book, uh, you know, A Gift from the Stars, and I'm, I'm starting on uh, We Will Never Let You Down, and it goes into great detail, and it's an incredible, incredible account. Um, I had a missing dime experience when I was in Washington. I had lunch with uh, Jaime Musan, who's kind of the anchor man for in Mexico for 60 minutes. He invited me to Mexico and I was on Telemundo television saying, you know, we have the scientists that can we have zero point energy that can alleviate the, the pollution in Mexico City. We have these advanced technologies. Uh, and then, uh, when I was going across the border with my, my friend, I had a little Porsche with a convertible and it was a nice summer night and we left at midnight and, uh, we were in a good mood and we were actually singing across the freeway doing over the limit and, uh, four hours missing. I mean, we have no idea what happened. Um, so yeah, I had a had a unusual missing time, and and you know, people, there's a lot of people who've had experiences, and I think it kicks it over for people once they have an experience because you have something to relate to. Otherwise, you think all these people are like making these things up, and uh, once I think, you know, people have no idea, you know, because of the infiltration of the controlled mainstream media. The infiltration of our education system, they have no idea of the hidden reality that's been uh, generationally indoctrinated into what their what their perceptions are in the world. And I think in the future we're going to have an incredible feeling of of eternal gratefulness for the Galactic Federation for clearing out the the Draco and the Nibu that are been nefariously <laughs> manipulating, working with a cabal on this planet, that they did that to help us. But I understand the prime directive. They have to they have to allow us to work out our own issues. But with the controlled education, controlled media, people don't have any experience. So they have no way to relate to what's going on. But it's, it's a soft disclosure doing shows like this that... Uh, in the many different avenues that this information is coming out that uh, people start to realize that uh, there's really something to this. Absolutely. We have a, we have a question from the chat room. I'm not sure if it's a serious question, but either way it amuses me and I'd kind of like to, so if anybody here, but especially Elena, if you've heard, was Trump abducted or not? That's from Mitzi in the chat room. I don't know. No, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Mitzi. <laughs> he he may be a clone. Uh, I'm trying to throw you a bone here. You never know. Um, take it because I yeah I haven't been paying attention and, and I did want to see if anybody had questions. Take a quick peek here. Uh, if you do have a question, oh okay, Mace one three nine. Any truth to the yellow book, Elena, that you know of? The yellow book. Right. Uh, Dan, what was Brad saying? That was again. It's kind of like a project looking glass type thing. You're talking about the yellow cube. Yellow cube also been referred to as yellow book. Yes. Oh. I don't know about it. No. Wasn't that where they were tracking um, different UFO experiences? That I, I thought. Uh, I can't that remember. May have, yeah, I don't know a lot about it myself. There was somebody I was talking to that. Uh, they may have even sent me the link and I just lost it. Uh, that actually it was Brad. It was Brad. Brad's got some links to it. So, uh, for those listening, you can go to my YouTube channel, the red pill, find the video up and go to Brad's website, uh, Brad Olson.com. Yeah. It's and, about the history uh, of aliens on earth. Just wanted to say that. Okay. Yes, yeah. uh, absolutely. So for for that about the yellow book, I know Brad knew, and he's also I think he talks about it in Beyond Esoteric, which I'm about a quarter of the way through, and I've got to get back to tomorrow. I'm going back and forth between three books uh, that are really great, and I've got to get something from Elena. Uh, Laura, actually, speaking of books, how's yours going? Oh my gosh! Every time I try and work on it, it's like something happens. It's like it's been taking forever. There's always 
it seems to be something getting in the way. So maybe I'm manifesting it due to my own resistances and I'm like creating these outer blocks. But when I first attempted to write it, uh, the person that was helping me edit um, supposedly accidentally deleted pretty much all of it. He was, she was helping me edit. Oh. And, um, and it's just like, you, you just feel so deflated once you lose stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. it's hard to have track. I wanted to have it done by the end of 2021, but, uh, I'm going to just get the ball rolling here and hopefully I can get it done soon within the next month or so for at least the first one out of a few. Yeah. And, uh, you know, stay positive because look at it as, okay, now it'll be easier for you to do it because you already know what you were talking about and what you wanted to talk about. And it may flow a little bit better. Uh, I'm trying to find that silver lining for you. (laughs) I don't know. I'm really impressed by anybody who's able to do that. And, you know, Elena, you've done amazing with uh, your books. And um, so, yeah, I just kind of overthink things and then I get frustrated and then I start painting because I can just, just do whatever. <laughs> I don't have to be exact. And, but I do love to write. So anyway, that's, that's where it's at. That's always a good thing. Elena, is there anything you'd like to ask uh, Dan or Laura? Oh, <laughs> or just anything in general you'd like to get to, to talk about that we haven't gotten to tonight. It, open question for anything you would like to get to. Well, there's something very important that I would like to to mention tonight because we haven't had the opportunity to get to this point. Regarding to the current events, you know, the good ET allies, they have dealt with the the ET problem, okay, and the Earth Alliance, the ET problem on Earth. It's done. It's pretty much, it's fine. It's done. But the thing is, it's not over. Uh, There there has been a lot of psyops that have been um, built since a few years to prepare to this moment to take away the power from us, to let us believe that we we are going to be saved for everything. So what, what, that, that, what's happening is Yes, there are good extraterrestrials. They have taken care of the extraterrestrial th- threat because it's in their directive, prime directive. It's in. The, it's what they do. They saved. Uh, what well, they didn't totally save us, but they removed the, the 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 extraterrestrial problem. Now, it is up to us to finish the job because they are not going. These ETs, these good ETs, they are not going to steal the victory from us. They don't do that. Okay. Nor should they. they. They, yes, they remove the threat, the off-world threat. That's right. how, what their laws are, their ethics are. And now the planet is ours and we need to deal with our problems. Mm-hmm. And it's not over. We need to, to, to deal with our elites, with uh, all the problems that, that are done, done to humans that we are able to deal with, okay? Right. And this is very important and that's messages are received to pass on regularly you we need to finish the job and what is finishing the job get rid of the ancient paradigm it's a dark night of the soul for humanity it's a rite of passage for humanity we need to see that from a higher perspective because we are evolving in consciousness so let's see it from a a higher conscious perspective directly okay we need to go through this to realize who we are as a species. What do we have in the gut? And it is by stopping consenting to feed the old beast that we let it die. We need to stand up and say no to be manipulated and to, to, to the tyranny that's happening. We need to do that. And um, someone upstairs told me that, yeah, the, the humans on earth need to put the last stone of the monument of their victory they, we need Absolutely. to do that you know to be the victors the, the, you know the, the winners it's our planet it's our culture it's you know nobody's going to say we, yeah, exactly we need to fight for this we shouldn't be relying on people from another planet to come down and tell us we don't need people to tell us that our planet's being messed with. Wake the hell up and get these people out of power. Um, until recently, I would say only force is going to get it done. And and I still, to some degree, believe it may have to come to that with some of them. 
at least but um but it's you know it's it's also about an inner deeper process to transform ourselves to do this every day to become it to become the sovereignty to become the no to tyranny you know yep it, it's it's an inner process it always starts uh, within per individually it's individually that at, at a level individual level that this world is mm. is changing and it's happening it's happening it just people it's hard for people to relate to something they're not going through and uh, it, it was for me too for, for the longest time well it, a lot of people i was just going to name a name and i'm not going to do that because that's a bad habit to get into but there are people out there that just that d will not approach the abduction for not phenomenon itself for instance simply because they're, you know, they're like you know that it's hard enough just getting people to take ufos seriously the problem is with that they're discounting a big part of why a lot of the bad aliens were here in the first place because with the deal that was brokered between um laura's great grandfather and uh, actually before that that he got kind of dumped with that that is proof enough that they had an ulterior motive to begin with we were just too naive to be able to see it at that point in time i miss and Put yourself in in Eisenhower's footsteps and in his place and in his mindset at being walked out to a, a spaceship and seeing a creature there. You have to be wondering. I'm sorry, but I would I would need to wear a diaper. I would have had to have a diaper underneath my clothes because, like, just well the the realization when it strikes you. So just. For people out there that like to bash, just try to put yourself into that place because I, I truly believe these things did take place, in my opinion. Um, Dan, actually, Laura, what you like to add to that? Because you were the one who brought up how it, it was actually your, your great grandfather kind of inherited that deal. Well, yes. And after I met Elena, she confirmed that the deals were done behind his back, that there was some sort of meeting. But it didn't necessarily lead to any kind of signing of a treaty. It was MJ-12, and she should probably go into that a little bit more than me. Um, and there was kind of a question I had there. Uh, in, in, in a lot of respects, do they even need treaties, or is it just sort of like on the surface to make it look like we made some kind of agreement so that when disclosure happens – they're not totally, totally the bad guys. Somehow we agreed to it. So they're using Eisenhower as a scapegoat so that it doesn't look like a total invasion, but there was some level of consent, even though the ones that agreed were like the hybrids of them and they were already part of the Dark Alliance or something. They needed an official con consent from officials. That's what they do on every planet they want to enslave. They got the, the, the population of the planet to officially agree to be enslaved. And when they do that, the Galactic Federation cannot do anything because it is all about free will and consent. Mm -hmm. When a population accepts an invader on their ground, nobody is going to interfere but, with their but, decision. Would you say except the, if they request help? Oh, right. Okay. Would you say some of these deep state players though are hybrids and they're in alliance with them, so it's not really fair because it's not really the consent of the greater population of humanity. That's the trick, because they are tricksters. The humanity never agreed for that. It was just an official treaty that covered the Nebu, the Greys, from the Federation. The thing is, all the abductions that are, have been going on since then, uh, since 1956, uh, that was the, the second uh, treaty with the Greys. Well, since that time, I mean, all these people who have been abducted weren't, um, it, it wasn't in, in the treaty. The treaty was only about 150 people, you know, they would abduct these greys, but they went way largely over that. The thing is, people don't know about this and they have been playing on consent. Mm -hmm. Fear is consent. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. Because, you know, since I've been told these things, I start to, to tell people, because I receive a lot of messages and emails of abductees, help. 
So I say, listen, realize that they do not have the right to do that. OK, if you consent, nobody's going to save you. But although the Federation has been sending teams and crews to save people as much as they could, but that's another uh, thing. Um, so they don't have the right to do that. If you stand up to them, you stop being afraid of them. You stand and you say, I do not consent to be abducted. I never personally gave my consent to be abducted. Now, get the mm out of my house. When I said that, said that to people at first, they went, <laughs> well, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, try it. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. people were started to get back to me. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> they left me and they didn't never come back. They left my kids they, they, they alone. Yes. So there's the, 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 the thing as well. If you are taken in your sleep and you're unconscious, you know, what you can do is before going to bed, if you have the suspicion to be ab that you may be abducted, you know, you feel these things, you mm -hmm. see UFOs and stuff. You say it out loud before going to bed every night. And I promise you, it works. If despite this, they still abduct you, they are in trouble with the Federation. Oh, nice. And that's actually for, for listeners out there that are having issues with the paranormal. That stands, in most cases, it stands for that as well. I had I had a young daughter. She was uh, maybe a few weeks, yeah, only a few weeks old when they started harassing her in my home. I went to put her in her crib one night, and there was this thing that kind of looked like a cartoon oil slick in the shape, almost like a spider. And I'm and she's whimpering in my arms and pulling back, and I lean forward to look more. And on the back wall, there is a nightlight and a window just above that. So there's the crib, the nightlight, the window. As I lean in, this thing moves up the wall beside the nightlight, cast a shadow, and then went down underneath her crib, and. I took her into our room, plopped her into our bed and said, this baby is never sleeping in that room again. We started having more and more issues like that. Then her father died. And I, I used to sleep in my own room because I'm a flopper. I always have been. And I grind my teeth when I'm sleeping. And I distinctly remember um, it slowing down right after her father died. And I was laying on my stomach awake, facing the wall bedroom doors over here and I felt somebody sit on the bed and put their hand on their sh on my shoulder and I thought it was my ex I turned over to give her a kiss and there's nobody there so then I, I'm like okay I maybe I'm waking up from a dream or something I lay back down and close my eyes then on the end of the bed I feel you know when you feel somebody sitting on the end of your bed you feel the bed move it goes down and then the bed starts shaking because the person who is not there but is sitting at the end of my bed is shaking their leg back and forth the way I often do as a nervous reaction to things that are going on. So I then jumped out of bed. The bed was still down and shaking. Something happened. He wound up leaving and the darkness started coming back and I snapped one day. Long story short, I snapped one day. And with true intention behind every word and the venom coming out of me, I was like, I know what's going on. I know what you're capable of. I know what we are capable of. I know a lot more about it than you do. If you don't leave me and my daughter alone right now, when I die, I will consume you. And I meant it when I said it. That is the day ghosts stopped coming to me altogether, even the nice ones. I haven't had a visit in a long time. So it works. It works. We are in control. We just need to know it. You you have to be certain of it. Certain of your conviction. Same with the, the aliens, the way you say it. With love, but conviction. I did not agree to this. And it's not cool, dude. So, you know, have a good night. On to the next one.
<laughs> and go back to sleep. That's what I want. I remember actually another one just popped into my, my mind. I'm sorry, but I, I've got to get it out there. This is one I've never shared with people. Um, I had an, an many ex-girlfriends, imagine that, uh, at another time. One was a dancer, and I had Christmas lights. I was too cheap to buy a lamp. I had Christmas lights above my ceiling, and that's what lit my room at night. And you could see them. They were on 24 hours a day. So one night, I got this weird sensation. I could not move. I opened my eyes. Everything's black. And now I know I should be seeing my Christmas lights. So I try to move again. And uh, I start to panic because I'm not able to move. I, I was able to slightly start moving my head. And I hear a voice saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, relax. In my mind, I was saying, F you. I'm not going to relax. Boom. Instant. My eyes were open. Boom. Instantly. The black came to, I could see the, the light. My girlfriend then comes, my then girlfriend comes out of the bathroom. Were you just behind me in the bathroom? I just felt somebody touch me on the shoulder. I'm still trying to figure out whether that was alien or supernatural. Although they're the both to me, supernatural events. Have you heard had anything like that ever happen? I guess they try to call that uh, what like when you stop breathing, sleep apnea or something like that. That that you stop breathing and and that's just your body. You know they came up with one of those. It's so lame. I can't even remember what it is to try to describe that experience. Have you had that encounter yourself, where it feels like it's an out of body experience, or that somebody may well have been trying to jump into your body? Well, I, you know, I, I've been in the contact of these, this, this phenomenon all my life. You know, as a psychic person, as a shaman, I've seen ghosts. I have cast away demons. I have exorcised people. I, I, I mean, these things happen. So, but that's not ETs. That's just a certain realm, certain density of the earth. With we call it the lower astral or the demonic, demonic world. There's so many to it, so much to it. It would worth a whole um, program about it, I suppose. Nice. nice. Is anybody else hearing that, or am I the only one hearing that? There's a. I'm uh, hearing it. A tone. Yeah. Elena, I think it might be. Is there any way you can turn your volume down on Skype just a tiny bit? I think you might be peaking just a little bit. Yeah, I'm hearing that too. Yeah. Is it okay? Is it okay yeah. like this? Absolutely. Yes. Is it I better? Think oh, yes. Better. Probably just a notch too loud on your mic. Fantastic. <clears throat> it's gone now. Okay. That's much uh, better. <laughs> Dan, uh, let's get to a question from you now, or just something you'd like to share with the audience. Well, I think everybody's kind of had it with the dark energies and when he cast them out of this planet. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, people are picking up the glitches on the perception, but, you know, a lot of people that, uh, you know, the cabal has made it on this planet, so a lot of people are on survival mode. They don't even have a chance to, to research. And as you know, you've had your channel censored many times in your YouTube channel, as Laura has as well. And, uh, you know, people are going to They censored rumble, it again tonight. Shoot. <laughs> So oh yeah, I remember believe what it. you're saying. That, <laughs> that video of you, me, and Dan, uh, Brad, uh, one of Elena's no, really? uh, followers, joined, and and she sent me a message saying when I tried to look at the video, it asked, it was blacked out, and it asked me if I really wanted to to see it, and I was like, um, yeah. I'm like, wow, thanks for letting me know. Okay, so go go ahead. You know, this is, uh, you know, perception matrix, I guess you could say we're in, and. Uh... As long as they have control of the information systems, you know, the, the media and the big tech and everything like that, you wonder uh, how this is going to transform. A lot of people are catching on to the, to the glitches from the different, but a lot of time, a lot of people don't have time to research any of this stuff. I'm just kind of excited at the possibility that uh, this at some point will transform the media system will be taken over and the truth will be revealed and our 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 government system will 
be operating maybe like they do on the advanced cultures where they have a, a benevolent uh, council that makes the decisions that are our corrupt medical system that uh, is for profit will be replaced uh, that my great grandfather was going up against Rockefeller and uh, back in the 20s uh, in military or science everything that we've been taught like William Tompkins says it's all misinformation our our, our planet's been hijacked all these decades everything we've been taught I want to cl oh. clarify that because oh. too oh, many this. people these days like to pick and choose what can and can't be possible and and like you said we were told that everything we have been everything i can't stress it enough everything we've been told is a lie okay sorry <laughs> go back to it Dan. it makes me feel uh, much oh, better just, I'm paying attention in school mm -hmm. and skipping school all the time sorry i had to say that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah just just imagine just imagine the world we could have you know and i was a little kid i was thinking oh in the future you know this is back in the 50s and we'll have anti-gravity cars go to other planets and all this and you know i spent 10 years meeting with scientists inventors and all <laughs> threats uh suicides uh, you know uh <laughs> and national security orders, thousands of incredible inventions and things been ever since the Nazis came in and infiltrated, we've been, we've had our complete uh, society uh, hijacked technologically in every aspect, you know, medical, propulsion systems, you name it. Uh, we had scientists way back 20 years ago that uh, when ABC, not ABC, uh, CBS interviewed me, I said, I'm not doing this unless I can say we have a scientist who can prove we have zero point energy, alleviate the need for nuclear oil and coal. They promised up and down I could say that. The higher executive, she said, made me cut that part out. And so we know the CIA controls, you know, the higher executives in the media. And so you just wonder at what point. Uh, they have the goods on all these people. The NSA has been monitoring them all. They have uh, the rule of law that can be used against all these criminals. They've been using secrecy with their secret societies. You know, nobody, the whole earth didn't get a chance to vote on whether or not we have the NIBU come in and <laughs> do a technology transfer uh, for abducting people. Uh, you know, this at some point, um, at some point, we're going to hit this crossing point of transformation where we're going to witness a, uh, you know, a beautiful transformation of the planet. And I, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we have to will it to be so. We, we, we can't just talk about it. We've got to keep taking steps, people, as well. Um, we, yeah, we, we've got about 18 minutes to 20 minutes left. So I think we're good. Um, geez, what else did I want to cover? Is, is there anything else anybody, uh, here would like to cover that we haven't? Well, I just wanted to confirm. I mean, I know Elaine has already said this, but I mean, just because it came out of my mouth, not hers, that MJ 12 did sign behind his back and, um, then he began to realize that he had lost control and wanted to invade Area 51. We don't have to get into that, but I just wanted to make sure that it was coming out of your mouth, not just mine, for the audience. Yes, Laura, that, that, that's exactly how we met, you and I. And uh, I never thought I would connect with you, especially not like this. It was amazing. I met uh, Val Thor, Commander, Commander Val Thor. That was a surprise. Uh, well, I asked for it, but then it happened as I wasn't expecting it anymore. And he started to tell me about these things that uh, he knew your great grandfather and and he, he told me his version of the story, which was Eisenhower never signed the, these treaties with the Greys for abductions and etc. And that, that's how I contacted you to, to tell you that I, I had heard this and in your heart, I remember you said that uh, you knew that in your heart already, but somebody yeah. confirming it, it's fantastic, you know. And Valthor um, employed the word, the expression, uh, the Council of the Twelve Men. 
signed with the name the Council of the Twelve Men. I said, oh, that's the MG12. <laughs> that that matches, you know. Wow. I mean, obviously, with with your research, Dan, and what you both know, this carries over from what Project Paperclip was that? Did that infiltrate these um, organizations like MJ12 and some of the secret societies, or was M I mean MJ12 was set up in Truman's administration? But I'll kind of leave it at that, though. That that's um, uh -huh. it's but quite complex. They are the shadow <laughs> government, MJ12. They have their hands on the alien or had their hands on the alien technology, and were doing all sorts of things. And things just got really bad real fast with the infiltration. There's, you know, there's a few things that really stand up for Eisenhower, and that was the first contact meeting in 1954, where Gerald Light, one of the people who were witnessed it, he, it was his conviction, he said in a letter, that Eisenhower was going to go forward with the public and have full disclosure, which is what the Galactic Federation would do, have full disclosure, not secrecy, like MJ-12 yeah. and the Vatican wanted. Also, he would have uh, threatened to, to invade Area 51 when they denied him access. Obviously, he wasn't on their side. And then when he left office, he tried to warn the people about the misplaced powers and the unwarranted influences. He wouldn't have been trying to warn the American people if he was on their side. I just wanted to add that. Yes. And I want to quickly let everybody know how you guys can get in touch with my guests this evening and where the heck are my glasses of course i don't have them nearby but we have www.thewebmatrix.net for those who want to uh, track down dan and uh his site is in chronological order the guy keeps updating it uh for people out mm -hmm. there who are just looking for ideas for your own shows go to that site because you'll get some good ones uh we have www.exopolitics.org for Michael. He's not here right now, but he was on earlier. So mm -hmm. for those people who don't know, exopolitics.org. We have cosmicgaia.org, uh, www. Or you could uh, also, it works for me, is uh, lauraeisenhower.com. And we have uh, www.elenadenan.org as well. And we still have some time left. Great. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. dumbs being destroyed, allegedly, worldwide. Can you uh, fill us in on anything you may know about that, Elena? Yes, the, there was an occupation by two main groups in the dumps. The Orion groups, mm -hmm. the Orion group, the Nebu, who are greys, and the reptilian seekers, what we more commonly called draconians or draco reptilians, uh, the Sicars. So these two groups are gone. They are normally competitors in the galaxy. They never work, rarely work together, but sometimes they ally for common interest, which they did with Earth. And they allied with dark sides of the, the some governments. The reptilians were working more with uh, the dark fleet, the Fourth Reich, and in Antarctica, but also was there, that's a faction of reptilians. There was another faction, reptilians, working also with the cabal, involved in anything that's dark magic and uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, politics. The Greys, it was different. The Greys were working for their for themselves. You know, just having residence here and doing their business. And when they signed this this disagreement, this agreement with Eisenhower, it was stipulated. You give us uh, facilities on Earth, underground. You don't mind our business, and we don't mind your business. That was right. written. But that was MJ12. So yeah. Don't so any, anything, anything ET, anything ET involved in the cabal and the dark fleet, it's the reptilians. The greys are just ha were just uh, just a parasite, you know. But you think they they are a race though? The greys they're not just robots. A lot of people think they're just robots that are working for somebody else. There's everything. There's so many different types of greys. All the greys are not regressive. They are wonderful 
cultures of gray beings that are fantastic, but that they are not here. Right. <laughs> These ones. No, yeah. The the greys who were parasiting parasiting us, us. These are from different cultures, mainly centered in Orion, but then you have Zeta Reticuli, Cygnus, Vela, uh, a bit in Andromeda Galaxy. They are biological beings who have, uh, for most of them, developed clones and synthetics. And the clones and the synthetics are the crews on the ships who abduct people. When you are abducted, you will maybe have the opportunity to see one biological entity, which who is the captain or the, the supervisor, but all the rest are all synthetics and clones. But were they originally ever human? Because some people say that, or they're from the future, and I know you put a oh meme up. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for bringing this up. <laughs> okay, a gray is not a human. It's two different species. Okay, okay, you can do hybrids with them. Okay, the way humanity is going to evolve is as human beings, not as grays. It's two different genome. We are human. The greys are reptiloids or insectoids, okay? They have uh, three fingers, we have five, they are, they're different. It's another species. It's like trying to breed cats and dogs. That, that's where it's, it's done to, you know? Two different species. Um, the humans from the future are here already, but are humans. There's a, there's a, a terrible psyop that is going on, in, that in, that has been installed in the New Age communities that some greys are us in the future. That cannot happen. Well, about, maybe they had taken over the Earth and it would be a, a terrible negative timeline where the Earth would have lost, which we avoided. Yeah, maybe these regressives would come back in time to influence us to get consent for whatever. Right. But but that's still going on, you know, these, these, these psy psyops. And there, there are, yeah, must be careful. Greys and humans are different. It's two okay. different is species. There, is there anything though that alters a human? Take <laughs> point that over the course of time, losing reproductive capacity and just how that changes the DNA that it turns into a species that one might consider alien or even gray. And I'll just kind of that'll be my last no, question. <laughs> not it's not gray, but a, a hybrid kind of a hybrid because yes, this this these things were great technology. It's great technology. It modifies the DNA for, the, the, the aim was for uh, the person who get this thing inside to be connected to the gray hive and manipulated. Fortunately, the gray hive has been disconnected from Earth. So now this connection won't happen. It's still harmful to your body. <laughs> Just not a good idea, but this connection won't happen. Um, so yeah, there are hybrids between greys and, and humans, but there's, um, I was made aware of this, this manipulation of greys or hybrid greys saying we come from the future and we need your consent or you just for, for us to be here, or we need genetic material. We need to abduct you and we justify abductions because we need to take fresh genetic material. Yeah. Come on. What it takes is one individual, and you'll have it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. They're, they're right. playing the poor me, poor me, and and that's how that's. I mean, most of our military would see right through that, but they justify it and go with it anyway because they wanted the tack. Unbelievable stuff. That that the, the thing that's unbelievable about them is because I actually believe it did happen. <laughs> There's so much evidence, regardless of what people like to say. So many, there is no, there's no evidence. I've seen no evidence. Well, they're walking around like this. If you're not seeing evidence, take your hands away from your eyes, take your head away from your phone and look up. It's everywhere. Um, we are getting down to the, about the last five minutes of the show. So let's get some final thoughts out there. Daniel. 
Uh, I just recommend everybody the research. Uh, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, Elena's books. You know, I the, the websites that you gave out. Uh, highly recommend that you uh, research those. And uh, you know, I've been doing a little bit of research ever since I, well, ever since going back 1969. But in 2001, when I saw what the mainstream media did, that purposely kept uh, the public. From becoming aware of explosive testimonies that revealed this reality, I, I you know, started researching. Um, uh, once you become aware, you you can't you can't deal with something unless you know something exists. So you know, I, I do all I can say is you know, to everybody is is research go through. Yeah, I guess all we have is alternative media channels. You know, on Rumble and BitChute and and certain speakers that are speaking out and. Uh, and um, yeah, just just research. That's all I can say. Yeah. All right, Laura, you got some parting thoughts for the listeners? Well, it's always so clarifying talking to Elena, and sometimes I get asked these questions, and uh, I wish I could just just kind of like do a shout out and like, hey, Elena. Um, and I, and I think I've uh, mostly gotten it pretty straight, but uh, it's just so great because it's always just really grounding and helpful, and just to have both of you here. Um, it's always awesome to be with you, Dan, and you as well, Stephen. My website's cosmicguide.org. Most of the stuff uh, that I do is posted there, and I will try and keep it updated. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there's just, yeah, things going on and uh, a lot to look forward to. Uh, the planetary aspects um, are always in our favor if we can get to the higher octaves of what they represent. They They like to leverage the shadow side of it, where they're kind of um, keeping us, um, you know, in the dark to where we don't experience the greater potential of any of these planetary uh, <clears throat> bodies and how that relates to our organs and our nervous system and our endocrine system. And I'll just say for like an example, the lower Saturn is the tyranny and the control. The higher Saturn has to do with self-mastery and becoming a teacher. And as that is working with uh the moon in opposition uh, on this particular full moon, it'll help us to really break down the Saturn moon matrix and programming, even if that technology has already been taken down, to help us go through the completion of this transformation cycle to uh, kind of hold the higher vibration that they've been trying to weaponize and use against Absolutely. us by finding a psyop. Every time there's a planetary aspect, they use a psyop to throw <laughs> into the inability to go through the initiation and breakthrough. They'll always find some way to create a psychological operation that puts us in the dark side of it so they can maintain control and just always know there's a flip side that's way better. <laughs> Absolutely. And Elena, parting words, we've got one minute left. <laughs> use all people, use your own discernment. We are, we are an extremely intelligent species. The fact that you are not aware of everything doesn't make you stupid, does, just makes you unaware. Just exactly. as Dan was saying, research and use your own discernment. Remember, every each of you, you are an amazing, amazing intelligence species with amazing psychic powers. If you do not know it, the enemy knew it, but now you need to know it. Go within. Don't try to find uh, answers outside. Who's been arrested? Who's fighting against who? It's not your problem. Your problem is to raise your frequency, do your job, stand against the tyranny, recover your sovereignty, go within and meet who's inside. And you'll be surprised. It's an amazing being inside. So that's Absolutely. my words. Absolutely. Thank you guys for sharing your time with us. We're out of time. We'll be back next week with the red pill. Thanks to all the listeners and thank you guys again. We're going out with the Illuminati song. Thanks for being here, everybody. Actually, we may not be because I didn't share the sound. Hang on. Here we go. to get into the Illuminati Cause we wanna get invited to the coolest parties By subtly communicating hidden symbology Soon we'll be part of a secret society Hollywood